Greetings YouTube. Welcome to another Rio Grande fan edition of Let's Check Out the Layout. So we're here at the Granite Mountain Railway owned by Doug and Barbara Geiger. And I'm going to try to give you a brief overview of this layout without boring you too much. So we're going to start here at, at staging, which is behind me, you can kind of see, at Chicago. So here we'll go with the tour. One end of the railroad starts here in staging. Not a very pretty part of railroading, model railroading, but a necessary part as well. You can see there's numerous staging tracks here at double is Chicago. And the yard exits here. You can see the car card packets. And the yard exits and, and uh, goes up into a helix and eventually ends up up on the railroad. And you can see there's their toggle switches for the tracks and the track selector switch and also the uh, indicator lights there to show your progress up the helix. And you end up up on top in Chicago or what will be modeled after Chicago with and this is also known as Brim Yard with containers and things to be loaded. Amtrak also originates here at Union Station. The track from staging comes out the tunnel in the back follows along the main line also in the back. The track that diverts from the main line to the left is the track that enters Mesa Yard. Not all trains enter Mesa Yard. The track in the back is the BN main and no BN trains generally enter here unless they're doing a power swap. The Santa Fe power here is uh, power for trains going to Los Angeles. See the complex network of track. I'll mention that this railroad has a lot of hand laid track. Estimates are close to about 5,000 feet of hand laid track, including all the switches, crossovers, double slips, single slips, things like that. This is Mesa Yard. It's very empty because we have a rule here when we run. A snow plow train. We always run the plow when it snows during an operating session or within about 24 hours of it. The snow plow hosed up the railroad last operating session and therefore not very many cars made it over here to Mesa Yard. The main line continues behind Colorado Can and the area here known as Colton Tower. Colton Tower has a lot of industry switching to do during an operating session. And, and gets trains from the Rio Grande and from the Santa Fe. The Rio Grande trains come onto Colton from the back, track below the bridge and around the corner by the water tower. And the track here in front crosses the Santa Fe Bridge into a tunnel down into Los Angeles. Now these two tracks actually will converge into a helix and end up I also use this little uh, CTC machine and they end up down here at staging for Colorado Springs in Los Angeles. You can also follow along here on the lights. All the staging yards work the same way the toggle switches and rotaries to select the track you want. Santa Fe has priority across the Colton Diamond here and so there's semaphore signals that will raise when the diamond is occupied to prevent any Rio Grande traffic from coming through. The main line, Granite Mountain main line, starts back at Mesa Yard and climbs up here across the bridge and around here to Imco, the ideal mining company industry is switched during regular operating sessions. And then we start into the mountains. This is Granite Mountain, the namesake for the railroad. We're going to continue along here on the main line. And you'll see some hikers making their way up Granite Mountain. And also some birds 
There's an eagle in flight, an eagle sitting. They must have a nest nearby because there's a lot of bird doo-doo here. And up a little higher, there's some deer frolicking about. So uh, this is Granite Mountain. It's kind of a nice little, uh, little. it's a big mountain. The trains have to traverse. So we're going to go on through here into the tunnel. This goes into a little helix and then it comes out right above itself in the rock cut. It's pretty cool. You'll also notice a tunnel in the back to the left there. That's for the narrow gauge line. This railroad hosts uh, standard gauge and dual gauge trains. We're coming now into the passing siding for Mossy Rock and also where the narrow gauge takes off to Alpine City. The narrow gauge runs up above and out of that tunnel there and up along where the Rio Grande locomotive, the narrow gauge locomotive and caboose are parked on the trestle. Following along the track up in the back there, it's a stock pen. And the track continues up around the corner and into the wall, into a little yard, hidden yard, that is Alpine City. Now the trains don't go much past this point anymore. The track has not been maintained and so this bridge is about as far as we can take the locomotive. You can see the wonderful scenery here at Mossy Rock. We're going to continue along here. We're going to pass uh, Granite Mountain train number 197 waiting here. This comes out of Brim and eventually ends up in Portland. We also pass the narrow gauge facilities here as well. Underneath this train is a dual gauge track so the narrow gauge can operate as well. And you can see the narrow gauge facilities with the depots, mainline and narrow gauge depots. The galloping goose is waiting here. A little yard for the narrow gauge. And when the track leaves Mossy Rock, it's dual gauge. You can see the three rails. This is not Lionel. This is HO and HON3. So the track goes under the trestle and into a tunnel. And then it comes back out on the track above. And you can see that there in the back. Trains will come out there and then across the trestle on their way to Nooksack. Giving you kind of a bird's eye view of the industries here at Nooksack. Their story hides. And the secret is Alpine City is actually inside that big flour mill in the back for the narrow gauge. A little yard is hidden in there. The roof comes off so you can get to it. We have an, a bunch of industries here, standard and narrow gauge industries at Nooksack, another little narrow gauge yard. Of course, a main line and a passing siding. A couple of trains waiting here, including the oil shale, the loaded train in the background. That train loads and unloads throughout the sessions, operating sessions, and uh, the goal is to see how many times you can do it. I'll show you where the loader is at the next town. There's an Amtrak station here for Amtrak 6. There's that snow plow that ran during the last session. We hope it gets parked for a long time. It's been seven years prior to the last operating session that we ran it. Back in January of 2007 was the last time it ran. So we can see the facilities, a big stock pen, pulling and watering facilities here for the narrow gauge mostly. And then on to the dual gauge turntable, which does work. Coming around the main line here, we're still in the Granite Mountain, Main. This railroad does host a lot of different railroads, but we are on the Granite Mountain, Main. Past the Great Northern Hopper Car Windbreak. Along the high fill here. And into Overlord. We have the Titanic Mine, and there's a eastbound forwarder. Now, even though this is mid 80s, mid 1980s, the F units are still in use. Pretty cool. 
And here is the Pierce Mining Company where the oil shale train is loaded. We use live loads loaded into those cars through the building. They will run the main line from this point forward on down onto the Victor branch below us where they will unload. We're going to leave the tree area here. We get into the higher terrain. Above Timberline, there's no more trees, just a lot of rocks, including another big mountain. So we come out onto the main. Main line's hard to see in this area, but it is right here in front of us. Into another mountain, around a horseshoe curve, and out the back across the bridge. Now this is going to be hard to see, but the track follows along the back. Into the next passing siding of Relief. There's the signal for Relief. Another signal. Some of the track back up in there. Goes into another tunnel. This railroad is also directionally pure. Whenever you're looking into a scene, you're looking north except for at relief, where you're looking south. Doubles back on itself. Now the track seems to disappear here into this snow shed. It truly does. There's a large helix in the garage that the train will traverse downward. You can see that here on the lights. We'll follow the lights on down. So now, to get to the other side, where the train comes out, you're going to see some things that you're not going to understand. But the train will come out the helix behind the wall on the lower level. And as we traverse back over here, to still a Quamish. Now the track hidden behind the masonite there is where the train will come out. That normally is hidden trackage. Eventually it will be hidden again by a huge steel mill complex being constructed here at Stillaquamish. Some of the operators uh, have affectionately called it Steel Aquamish. The track will come out in the back there at the junction, in the far back. The track in the front, more to the left, there is the Milwaukee St. Paul branch. St. Paul is just a small three-track staging yard hidden under the layout. Milwaukee trains originate and, and uh, terminate there. They come on to the Granite Mountain via the siding, which is the, the back track. The front track is the main line. And you'll see a couple cars sitting here on this front track off the siding. That's the Milwaukee interchange track, so all the trains that need to do interchanging with the Granite Mountain will do it here on this track. Normally there's a lot more cars than just two, but again that snow plow kind of hosed us during the last operating session. Now there's also an interesting thing here. Most people don't do switching with passenger trains, but we do. This uh, single Amtrak engine here is for Amtrak 66, which will take a couple of superliners down to St. Paul off of Amtrak 6. And so you get to do a little switching here with a passenger train. It's a lot of fun. Following the main line here, past the co-op cold water grain elevator, along the back is the main industry tracks in the front. The big engine house is for the Milwaukee. It houses both electrics and diesels. The Milwaukee branch is normally electrified with uh, non-working overhead wire. And uh, so the electrics get pulled off here and diesels get added for trains that need to continue and for trains going to St. Paul the electric can be added back on. Passing the low ram building coaling facility across the diamond on the lighter colored ballast and back along here this is Arrow Yard and Arrow Yard does some switching of industries and also trains that pass through. The tunnel in the back goes off to Vancouver it's not currently being used, but we do use it during op sessions, operating sessions, as a turning Y. And so we can turn coal trains here that load, coal trains load here, 
and any other train oil shale train and things like that that need a turn. It also serves as a yard lead for Aero Yard. The lighter colored ballast track that curves off to the right, ooh, excuse me, is uh, the Victor Branch, the right track, and um, that's where the oil shale goes and also leads off to the Union Bay Industries. The track where the Electromotive Oakway SD60 and Amtrak train are sitting is called Totem. This is Amtrak 6. And the GE Coal Train. The GE Coal Train has just loaded and will make its way back to Chicago. Amtrak is also heading to Chicago. You can see the Victor Branch at the upper level. Amtrak is still on the Granite Mountain Main Line. At Exxon here, the oil shale will unload and make a trip back to the Pierce Mine for more oil shale. The Granite Mountain Main Line goes into the wall under the bridges and along the helix and down here into Portland and Seattle staging. Again, not much to look at, these staging yards are, but serve a great purpose. The helix is just to the left, behind the masonite. You can see it there in the little slot. The raised track goes off to Chicago, and the curved tracks come in here to Portland, Seattle. Now back up top, the two bridges, they lead over here to Westview on the Union Bay. This used to be a lot larger with industries to switch, but has been kind of made a little bit uh, smaller due to some recent work here uh, for the steel mill complex. This is the other half of Pacific Steel. You saw steel, still a Quamish. This is where the Irene uh, blast furnace will go, as well as other steel mill related buildings and tracks, things like that. I'm not fully up on how steel all works, so I trust that Doug will make it correct, though. He's been studying it for a long time. All again, all hand laid track. Double slips and things is really, really amazing work. Now this track continues around here to a barge. This is the Foss Barge. This ferry boat lifts out and the cars go on to Alaska. Again, Alaska is down, down here in Anchorage, I should say. Anchorage, Alaska is right down here. You can see the Anchorage uh, car card boxes for cards, cars going there coming to and going from Anchorage. All right. Well, that concludes our trip over the Granite Mountain Main Line. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see if we can get a train running at some point, but at uh, this point, that's all I've got. So hope you enjoyed the Granite Mountain. Rio Grande fan out.